This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today I get to uh, sub for Pastor Bill. Pastor Bill, as I think most people are aware, had some surgery done on his arm this past week and is doing fairly well from what I understand. Probably still is having some pain in the biceps, but so we keep him in our prayer today. Only announcements I can think of, and it really has no bearing, except that a week from this coming Sunday, the 14th, we go on daylight saving time. So please remember to uh, spring ahead. I'd like to ask uh, Julie at this time to prepare us for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives us all of our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and for whom no desires are known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done, and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead to sin and has made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. And Almighty God, strengthen us through power of the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn is Be Thou Our Vision, hymn number 793.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Pray together the prayer of the day. Holy God, through your Son, you called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. For our passing of the peace this morning, let us give each other a, a hug of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The first reading for today is from the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. After escaping from slavery, the Israelites come to Mount Sinai where God teaches them how to live in community. The Ten Commandments proclaim that God alone is worthy of worship. Flowing from God, the life of the community flourishes when based on honesty, trust, fidelity, and respect for life, family, and property. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or is that in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. 
You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The psalm for today is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The second reading for today comes from the letter, first letter to the Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 18 through 25. The word of the cross is pure foolishness and nonsense to the world because it claims that God is mostly revealed in weakness, humiliation, and death. But through such divine foolishness and weakness, God is working to save us. The center of Paul's preaching is Christ crucified. The 18th verse, the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. 
But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord our God, for he is gracious and oh, slow to anger. The Holy Gospel for this day is found in the second chapter of John, beginning at the 13th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus attacks the commercialization of the religion by driving out merchants out of the temple. When challenged, he responds mysteriously with the first prediction of his own death and resurrection. In the midst of a seemingly stable religious center, Jesus suggests that the center itself has changed. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves and the money changers skeeted, seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both sheep and cattle. And he also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me, O Lord. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you give, can you show us for doing these things? And Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his own body. And after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, And they believed the scriptures and the word that the Lord had spoken, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, good morning. Brought a sign with me this morning. I'd like to thank the Washburn Highway Department for allowing me to to borrow this sign for a couple of weeks. And it's got a speed limit. Uh can vary, as some of the people were saying when I brought this out. Well, you got such a low mileage, you could have gotten one that was more high, like 55 or 65. Uh, This one's only 35. But speed limits are like our Ten Commandments. They're a law. We're supposed to follow that. Now, for a lot of people, they might say, well, 55 miles an hour, that's where I drive, out on the highway. Then we get to a city. Like if we get into Webster or Siren, speed limit there might be 35 or 30, and Spooner goes all the way down to 25. Why do they lower the speed limit down to 35 or 30 or 20, 25? Well, I guess it's because they're concerned about us. You want to make sure that we don't get hurt. And so because things might be a little bit closer there, they say, now, we want you to drive slower so you don't hurt yourself. But also, they would say, we want you to really drive that lower speed so that you don't hurt somebody else. I think that's maybe why God gave us the Ten Commandments, too. So that... We would love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. That was the first three commandments that we heard this morning, read in the Old Testament lesson. I alone shall be God for you. You shall not take my name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But then the next seven all deal with concern for ourselves, but also for other people. God puts limits on us. 
may we learn to keep the right speed to follow the law of God, to show God that we love him, to show that we love ourselves, but also that we love others. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your law. We thank you for your word, that word which is truth, the word which is powerful. O oh Lord, please be with us and help us each day to follow your word so that we can have peace, so that we can find strength. For we ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Very often people will say that Lent is a journey to the cross. I guess I like to add a little bit more to that. It's a journey to the cross, but also to the empty tomb. But really that journey is not just during Lent. It's a journey that we're doing each and every day. Our journey this year, down to the cross, down to Jerusalem, began a couple weeks ago when we were up at the Mount of Transfiguration. There Jesus took three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John. And as they were up there in the temple, or up on the mountain praying, all of a sudden there was Moses and Elijah. And they were talking with Jesus and said, Jesus, it's just about time for you to go down to Jerusalem and there give your life to die. But you'll rise again on the third day. The church sure people might be forgiven, that they might have the assurance of eternal life. We went ahead a couple of weeks. And we saw that Jesus was baptized, and, and that part of that baptism, a voice from God came and said, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. And he left the Jordan, and he went out into the, the wilderness, and there he was tempted for 40 days. And then Jesus went up to the Galilee. And there he began to say to people that were going to be his disciples. Follow me. I will make you not just fishers of fish, but fishers of men. Follow me. And it wasn't too long after that that Jesus came to a place. A place where there was a crossroad. Where there was a T. And Jesus said, it's time for me to go down to Jerusalem. To take a, a right turn. And so it says, and Jesus turned his face down to Jerusalem. And began to tell his disciples, we're going down to Jerusalem. Follow me, go with me. Take up your cross and follow me. Jesus comes to us this morning. As maybe we come to the crossroads. Which we do probably just about every day. And we make decisions. Which way will I go today? Who am I? Who do I want to be? It's like... Joshua said to the people of Israel, Choose this day whom you shall serve. Will you serve God? The God who has brought us out of Egypt? Or are you going to worship the gods of the things around here? Lent. A reminder of daily choices that we make. And so we say, God, make us steadfast, in your promises. Make us steadfast in the promises that we make to you. That we will follow you. Because we believe that you will be our God, just as you've said, and you will always be with us. You'll never leave us, 
He'll never forsake us. As God said, I want you to be a Christ one. I want you to keep the faith. I want you to love. Love God and love one another. Just like that man who came to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What's the first commandment? What's the greatest commandment? Love God. Follow God. And love one another. That was what God said. Keep my word. Love me. Love one another. And center yourself on the cross of Jesus Christ. And live in its light. In the verses that follow what Carolyn read this morning, it said the people of Israel were fearful. They said, oh, don't let God talk to us anymore. We're worried. We're frightened. And Moses said, don't fear the Lord. This is the way God is going to test us, whether we will be his people or we choose other people or other things to be our God. To realize that God is number one. To remember the Sabbath day, the Sabbath day which could be every day as we pray, as we look at God's word, as we call upon his name, Jehovah. Jehovah who provides for us, who keeps us in peace, who's always present with us, who makes a difference in our life, and thereby says, as I am holy, I want you to be holy. I want you to make a difference. So remember to live, caring for one another. And don't be afraid. Choose life. Choose love. Declare the glory of the Lord, that power, that might, that passes all understanding. So that we can say with the psalmist, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, the way I live my life, let it be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Because you are my strength. You are my redeemer. It's kind of interesting that the gospel for this morning, those words are found in every one of the gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They must be important. This must be an important event. That God, that Jesus Christ came and said, you are making my father's house a place that it shouldn't be. And they said, well, how can you do this? And he said, I can destroy, you will just try to destroy my temple, my life, my body, but it can't be done. St. Paul told the people in one of his letters, you are temples of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And you are called by that name. I think that's what Pastor Bill has been saying to us for the last couple of weeks. Over and over and over again. That that name that God has given to us are sons and daughters of God. We are called by name. He has redeemed us. He's called us by that special name. And he says, don't let that house be polluted. Don't let your bodies be destroyed. Don't say as ancient Israel wanted to say, oh, if we can just go to the temple, if we will just say our prayers on Sunday, we'll be safe. And God said, no. I want you to make that decision. I want you to make that decision every day when you get to the crossroads that you don't decide for wealth, for popularity, for the things of this world. As Paul said in our epistle for this morning, in the wisdom of the world. The wisdom that the world wants to declare. This is what's really wise. 
but follow what the wisdom of God is that centers itself in the words, in the sacraments, in Christ crucified and risen. That the zeal of being God's temple compels us. It empowers us. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God create in us a clean heart. Open our eyes that we can see. Open our ears that we can listen. Open our hearts that we'll believe. Open our lives that we'll obey. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, when we come to the crossroads, let us go the right way and follow our God. Follow our Christ. Let us go down to Jerusalem, to the cross, to the empty tomb. For it makes all the difference. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is God is Here, hymn number 526.
Let us confess our faith this morning in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer song for this morning is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. We'll sing the first verse and then I will have some prayers. Also have some time where you can share your prayers and petitions. And then we will sing the second verse of What a Friend We Have in Jesus, hymn 742. O Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you that you have given us a way to talk with you, to share our joys, to share our burdens. And so we give you thanks this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for our nation. We pray that you'd be with our nation's leaders, out in Washington, in Madison, in our county, and throughout the world. Come with your mercy, O Heavenly Father, that you might give us wisdom and guide us into your way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the improvements that we've had over COVID. We thank you for the scientists that have given us the Pill, the medicine that we can use. And Lord, we pray that they would work for all of us. Lord, give us patience as we go through this pandemic. And may we all be healed in body, soul, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Pastor Bill. Grant him your healing presence and healing strength. We pray that you would speed his recovery. We pray that you'd be with Rhonda as, as she cares for Bill. We pray for all of those who need that healing presence, physically, emotionally, or spiritually this day. Come with that healing presence and make us whole. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, now hear the prayers of your people gathered here this morning. Lord, we bring to you all those who need that healing presence so much. We pray for caretakers. We pray for nurses and doctors. We pray for all those concerns we bring before you this morning, that you would hear them. Lord, into your presence, 
We bring these petitions to you this morning. We pray that you would answer them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now pause for our offering for this morning. We give thanks for all of you who come so faithfully and bring your offerings to us. We thank you for all of your gifts of talents, of time, of possessions. Let us pray our thanks prayer. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we may be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, and who in dying has destroyed death, and rising has brought to us eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you for the forgiveness and remission of all of your sins. In the same manner also he lifted up the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness and remission of all of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And he taught them to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you now to have your communion as you have it in home, or as you have it here.
Let us bow our hearts in prayer. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all of your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Holy Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our sending him is Savior again to your dear name we raise, hymn 534. Before we sing our benediction this morning, I forgot one thing in our prayers this morning, and that was that one of our former members, Bob McEnroy, passed away this past week, and so we would give a prayer for him and also for Jan and the family. Just bow our hearts in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of Bob McEnroy. We pray that you'd also be with Jan. Grant her your presence, grant her your healing presence and strength. As she goes through this day, goes through this time, and we also pray that you'd be with her as she undergoes surgery this possibly this coming Wednesday. For all of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.